for uh, 7.2, which is, uh, our goal is to take algebraic expressions, which have an x and a y in them, and uh, rearrange them so that we know uh, what the slope of the line uh, that these make represent, and what the slope would be, and uh, what the y-intercept would be. And if we knew that, that is sufficient information to plot uh, these lines. In addition, as I'm going through these steps, I'm going to uh, draw a little sketch of the line itself. I encourage you to connect what we're doing here with uh, an actual graph as often as you can. Take a, take a moment extra to say, okay, well, if this is my uh, line, it has these features, then maybe I can I sketch it and maybe check in Desmos to make sure you're right. So uh, the first question here is actually all the steps are shown. So we wanted to isolate y. And we did that by adding 8 to both sides and then uh, dividing both sides by negative 2, which you can't really see, I guess, that well. It's pretty faint on the video. So uh, I'll be going over the other ones in more detail. I'm not going to go through this one, but I am going to take a second to sketch that. So that means that there's a, a y-intercept at negative 4. and that the slope will rise 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and run 2. And I could keep going with it if I wanted, but I'm actually going to just call it there. All right, and that's what that line looks like. It has a negative slope, it looks like, uh, which is what we wanted. All right, so... <clears throat> Again, if we want to find out what the slope and the y-intercept are for this line, we need it to be in the form y equals mx plus b, which means y has to be isolated. So we're going to try and get y by itself, so it's just eventually y equals some things. Uh, to do that, we got to get rid of this 3x, and we have to get rid of this 4. And uh, the question is, well, how do we choose what to get rid of first? Um, and the answer, generally speaking, is we want something that's furthest away from y, and we'll get rid of those first. So 4 is uh, pretty close, operationally speaking, not spatially. So you, Four is being multiplied by y. Uh, that so, if you knew what y was, the first thing you do is multiply by four, and that's what we mean by closest. That the four is closest because the first thing you would do if you knew y was say one and you want to evaluate something is you'd multiply by four. So furthest thing away is this three x. So to get rid of it, I'm going to do the opposite of adding three x to undo it, the fact we got three x. I'm going to subtract three x from both sides. Now, that has the uh, effect of what we call canceling out the 3x on the left-hand side. <clears throat> and we should write a new line that has our 4y on the left, and that's equal to um, whatever we get when we have these two guys. So negative 16 take away 3x. So if I do negative 16 take away 3x, these are not like terms. So I can't group them to say give me negative 19x. It doesn't work because I don't know what x is. I don't know what I'm counting. So as a result, I can just, I can only write it as negative 16 minus 3x. However, because we tend to like our x terms first, we can also rewrite that as negative 3x take away 16, really just changing the order of these. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. Y isn't quite by itself yet. We still have a 4, and there's a hidden multiplication here between the 4 and the Y. So to do the opposite of multiplying by 4, I'm going to divide both sides by 4, meaning all terms. And again, that has the result of canceling out 
these fours. And I get y is equal to negative 3 quarters of x. Negative 3 over 4, we can just write it as a fraction in front if we like, and they're the same thing. Minus 16 fourths, which actually simplifies just to negative 4. All right, so we've got this slope here, which is uh, negative 3 quarters. And the y-intercept, which is this last term, which is negative 4. So if I want to sketch this, just quick, a little dirty sketch. And then we're going to have a y-intercept at negative 4. And we would rise 3, 1, 2, 3. But we would run negative 4, so we'd run in the negative direction. 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4. So it looks something like that, if we were to sketch it, which we were not asked to do. Just throwing it in there so we remember what these things look like when sketched. All right. So we'll move on. Uh, question two here uh, asks us to isolate y. And, uh, well, we got this 18 on its side. So if we can get rid of the 18, maybe we'll be good. So uh, we'll subtract 18 to remove this positive 18 by taking away that positive 18 from this side. And we'll do that to both sides. It cancels out this 18. Now, what's really important here is that leaves us with, we still have this negative in front of the y. We have a negative y. And that's equal to the value of 2 take away 18, which is negative 16. And that's fine. But we haven't isolated y. We've got a negative y, and we actually just want a y. So we've got to remember that what this really means is negative 1 times y is equal to negative 16. So just like when we had 4 times y, we divided by positive 4, we're going to divide by negative 1. Divide by negative 1, and we will divide the left-hand side by negative 1 as well. That has a result of canceling these negative 1s out. And we end up we're getting y is equal to negative 16 over negative 1. Well, it gives us positive 16. Now, if you just get a value like y equals 16, that actually means that we have a y that's equal to 0x plus 16. It's kind of a, a code expression. Okay. And uh, you can see that 0 times x would be 0. So it would really be y equals 0 plus 16, or y equals 16. So this is like simplified. Uh, so that means our slope, if you see a line like this, it means we have a horizontal line, and our slope is 0. But our y-intercept is at 16. So if I was to sketch that, I would say I just have a line up here. And that's at 16. Okay. So we'll isolate this guy now. So we'll get this y by itself. So we will, uh, we got a few things going on here. We have a 5x, so we got to get rid of. We have this negative 20 we got to get rid of. And we have this 80 we have to get rid of. And the question is, well, what do we get rid of first? Um... There's a few different paths we could take here. We could remove the 5x from this side. We could remove the 80 from this side. Although a caution is from removing the negative 20 because it's a little bit closer to the y than these other two, which are relatively similar in distance. So we're going to remove... Uh, I'm going to choose one arbitrarily. Uh, I think in the answer key, I actually took away 5x from both sides. So I think to switch it up, we'll take away 80 this time. So we'll subtract 80, and we'll do that from both sides of the equation. And so then I write, we've got 5x minus 20y. I don't know why I wrote 50x. That's wrong. Our next line looks like 5x, take away 20y. 
it's going to be equal to 0, take away 80, which will get negative 80. OK. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to get rid of, uh, we got to get rid of the 20 and the 5x. We start furthest away from the y, so we'll take away the 5x. And we end up with getting a negative 20y on the left, and we get negative 5x minus 80 on the right. Because, again, these are not like terms. They don't group together. And uh, I guess I still have this negative 20 here over y, or an x to y, so I'm going to divide by negative 20. I have to do that to every term on the side, because I have to divide a side by negative 20, not an individual term. And so that cancels these guys out, and we end up with a statement like y is equal to negative 5 over negative 20. That simplifies. I can think what goes into 5 that goes into 20. Well, it looks like 5 goes into both. So I'll, di or I'll divide this one by 5. Also, we have a negative over a negative here. So it's going to become a positive fraction. And I'll divide the top and bottom by 5. It'll give us 1x, or 1, over 20 divided by 5 is 4x. And negative 80 minus 20 is positive 4. All right, so that means our slope, the number being multiplied by x, is a quarter. And our y-intercept, our b, is 4. So we get 4 here and 1 fourth. So I'll draw a little version of that here. So it's a little bit higher up in this case. So it's above 4 is the y-intercept. We always start with the y-intercept. And we rise 1 every 4 we run. And I could rise negative 1 and run negative 4 as well. There we go. Okay, so E wasn't assigned because uh, I want us to focus on some other things before we worry about these weird cases. But um, I'm going to solve it now anyway, so that if you're going back and reviewing, and you're using this as a review tool, uh, you have the solution here. So uh, we want to, OK, so we don't have a y to isolate. So actually, we cannot put this in this form. It's actually impossible. Uh, this sort of line actually will be a vertical straight up and down line. So what you want to, do, want to do is isolate x. Now, usually when you want to isolate something, you get everything away from its side. However, in this case, actually, rather than taking away 12, which would be fine, but I would still have a negative x. Uh, so I'm actually just going to add x to both sides. That actually turns out to be a little bit faster of a method. And so I get x is equal to 12. Now, if I graph the line x equals 12. It actually looks something like this. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. And I get this line straight up and down like that. And so that has a slope that is undefined. And the y-intercept, there is no y-intercept. We'd say it does not exist. All right. Now let's move on to question F. All right. <clears throat> so question F, uh, all right, we have some isolating of Y, which isn't so bad. Uh, however, this isn't the only way that this equation differs from the line equation Y equals MX plus B, that form. Uh, because in addition, we also have this set of brackets here. So I think the first thing I want to do, because I notice the line form I'm trying to put this into doesn't have brackets, I'm actually going to distribute my 4 into both of these brackets, just to multiply it out. Uh, so I don't have brackets anymore. Then I'll get y minus 8 is equal to 4x. 4 times negative 2 is negative 8. All right. 
and then we'll isolate y to finish this off. So I'm going to add 8, add 8 to both sides. And we just get then that y is equal to uh, I have 4x minus 8 plus 8. And I do have some like terms. These guys cancel out. And I get just 4x. Okay, so you can imagine 4x plus 0 is actually my line equation. And when you add 0, you don't actually need to say that you added 0. So it's a slope here is 4 over 1. Uh, but the y-intercept is 0. So it's going to look something like this. And I'll have a y-intercept at 0. And we'll rise 1, 2, 3, 4 for every 1 we run. We rise 1, 2, 3, 4, and we run another 2. And there we go. We get a pretty steep line like that. Okay, uh, g is a bit of a funny bird. We have a bunch of decimals here. Now, we talked in class about some ways to get rid of fractions by multiplying both sides by the denominator. Uh, we can apply the same logic here, because a fraction can also be written, pardon me, a decimal can also, also be written as a fraction. 0 0.3 is the same thing as 3 tenths of x, and minus 0.6 is the same thing as 6 tenths of, x, of y, Minus, uh, oh, 1.8 is 18 tenths. That's equal to zero. Now, you didn't actually have to do this. All you had to do is recognize that if you multiply a decimal, like 0.3, by 10, you actually just shift the decimal place over 1. And that's actually what we want to do with all of these guys. Because we have 0.6, and that's times 10, and that gives us a nice integer, and 1.8. Any decimal, if you multiply it by 10, it moves it 1 over to the right. The decimal over 1 to the right is... Uh, all right, so we're going to multiply both sides by 10. And I'm actually going to just lazily put the whole thing in brackets, and we'll distribute a 10 to everything. So we get... 10, uh, I shouldn't do, I should do a dot for times, 10 times 3 tenths. Now, there's a couple of ways to think about that. 10 over 1 times 3 over 10. Uh, you can see that we can divide diagonally by 10. So we could leave 1 over 1 times 3 over 1, which actually just gives us 3x. Now, it happens to have the same property no matter what number you put here. So if you put a 6 here, uh, or y, again, the same thing happens. We end up with negative 6y. So let's pretend we didn't know that. We could just go to the calculator and say 10 times negative 18 over 10. What's that? So I just write it in. 10 times uh, negative 18, and we're going to use the fraction button here, over 10. And we're just going to see what that should equal. And it actually gives us negative 18, because it follows the same principle here. And that's all equal to 10 times 0, which is actually also 0. OK, we still have some isolating to do. Uh, now, I think we've done a few of these uh, steps already. So what I'm going to start doing is combining a few steps. So I know that I can get rid of this 3x and this 18. I can do that by taking away 3x and adding 18. So I can take away 3x and add 18. I can do that in the same step. These additions and subtraction steps I can actually do all at once. As a result of canceling out the 3x and the negative 18 to give a 0 minus 3x plus 18. So I get negative 6y is equal to uh, 0 minus 3x is negative 3x plus 18. And then we're going to divide by negative 6. And that gives us y on the left is equal to negative 3 over negative 6 is a half of x. And 18 over negative 6 is negative 3. That means we get a slope of a half, but a y-intercept of negative 3. And so that looks something like this. So 
comes in at a third, up one over two, one over two. Like that. All right. Um, next. Okay, we talked in class about some ways of uh, simplifying algebra questions that have fractions in them. We could actually just use our algebra rules, or sorry, our fraction rules, and subtract by half and multiply by five quarters and so on. However, there's a trick that makes our algebra a lot easier when we have fractions like this, which is we can multiply both sides of the equation by the least common multiple of the denominators. LCM of 2, 5, and 10. So, reminding you, multiples of 2 will be 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, dot, dot, dot. Multiples of 5 will be 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, dot, dot, dot. And multiples of 10 are going to be 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, and so on. And if we look, we can see the least common multiple of all of them is actually 10. Again, by coincidence, uh, we're going to multiply both sides of the equation by 10. Again, kind of like we did the last time. Uh, I'm writing it over here. Just It doesn't actually matter what side you multiply things by. Maybe it'll be a little bit less confusing if I write it over here, though. So uh, it's kind of messy. Okay, so I'll just write it here. 10 times a half minus 4 fifths x minus a tenth of y is equal to 0. I'll multiply half by 10, and it gives me 5. 5 is half of 10. And I'll take away, multiply 10 by 4 fifths, find, or negative 4 fifths, pardon me. And 4 fifths of 10 is 8. And so negative 4 fifths of 10 is negative 8 x. And 10 times negative 10, pardon me, 10 times negative a tenth, a tenth of 10 is 1, so negative a tenth of 10 is negative 1. Why? And 10 times 0 is 0. So again, we get the situation where we have a negative y, and we could get all the things away from y side. However, in this case, it actually would be quicker if I just added y to both sides. Oh, plus y. It cancels this guy out. And we get 5 minus 8x is equal to y. However, I want to change this to be in my y equals mx plus b form. So I'm going to rearrange it. So I'm just going to change the order. So it'll be y is equal to. And I'm also going to change the order of these guys and call it negative 8x plus 5. And that means I have a slope of negative 8 and a y-intercept of 5. So if I did a sketch of that, the y-intercept will be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And I'll rise negative 8, 1, 2, oh, slope is 8 or negative 8 over 1, which means negative 5, 6, 7, 8. We rise negative 8 and we run positive 1. And so. Yeah, that's a pretty steep line. Kind of hard for me to draw exactly how steep it is. Okay, let's move on to question two. So question two really takes it one step further and just asks us to plot or graph the following lines on the grids that we provide. All right, so we're going to start by isolating y. We're going to get turn this into y equals mx plus b form. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to get y by itself. So we're going to add 9 to get it away. We start with 9 because it's further away from y than the 3. We'll add the 2x plus 9. That doesn't actually simplify, so we have to just write it as 2x plus 9. And that's equal to, well, the negative 9 and the positive 9 cancel out. And that gives us 3y. Now I'm going to divide by 3. Divide everything by 3. And that gives me 2 thirds of x plus 9 thirds, which is 3. That's equal to y. 
which is to say y is equal to 2 thirds of x plus 3. And that means I have a y-intercept of 3. 1, 2, 3. And I'm going to rise 2 and run 3 to get my next point. Rise 2 and run 3 to get my next point. Or I can think of rising negative 2 and running negative 3. Rising negative 2, running negative 3. Negative 2, negative 3. Like so. And so this line continues on forever. All right. Now, uh, if we want to do question B, it's actually a lot like uh, question B. Like question C. It, nope, like question E. It doesn't have a Y. So actually we're going to end up getting a, an expression of a vertical line. So I'm going to try to isolate X to do that. So I'm going to add 36 to both sides. You get 9x is equal to 36. And if I divide by 9, I get x equals 4. So that actually means we're going to get a line at 1, 2, 3, 4. And what's unique about this line is that no matter what point I choose on this line, like say this point here, this is the point. Is this your water? No. Okay. Uh, he, uh, his office is upstairs. Okay, thanks. Uh, okay, sorry for the interruption. Yeah. So what's interesting about this line is that any point I choose, like say this point randomly, it's a point four two, or I'll choose some other random point down here. Say that'll be the point uh, four negative one two three four. So it's point four negative six. Uh, if I choose another point, say um, here the x intercept, that's a point four zero. So what happens to be true about all the points on this line is that no matter what happens for y, x is 4. And that's true for every point I'm going to choose. There's no way I can choose a point on this line that doesn't have an x value of 4. And 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And what's in, it doesn't matter what y is. That's why y isn't in the equation. What x is doesn't depend on what y is. And that's different in this line. We need an x and a y because we're relating the two. When y is a different value, it changes what x is in this case. When y is 5, we get what x is 3 because we get the point 3, 5 here. And that's not the case here. When y is 5 here, x is 4 because x is 4 no matter what. So that's why this equation doesn't have a y. <clears throat> Let's finish this off. So we're going to, uh, I think you guys are starting to get the, the patterns here of, sub, of this algebra, so I'm going to speed it up a little bit. I'm going to subtract 4x from both sides, and that's going to get 4y is equal to negative 4x plus 4. It's fine, and then I'm going to divide 4 to get rid of this 4 here, and that's going to give us y is equal to negative 4 over 4, negative 1x plus 1. And so that means the slope is 1 over 1. And the y-intercept is 1. So we're going to get this y-intercept here, and we're going to rise negative 1 and run 1. Negative 1 and run 1. Or you can think of yourself as rising 1 and running negative 1. Rising 1 and running negative 1, like that. And I could continue, but I'm not going to. So that gives us a line. Lastly, we've got to graph this sucker. So the first thing we should do is distribute this half into the set of brackets. So we get y plus 3 is equal to 1 half of x plus half of 8 is 4. And then we'll take away 3 from both sides to isolate y fully. And we get y is equal to a half of x. And 4 minus 3 is positive 1. And so to graph this, we're going to put a y-intercept of 1 on the graph here, and we're going to rise 1 and run 2. Rise 1, run 2. Rise 1, run 2. 
1, 2. Right is negative 1, run negative 2. Run right is negative 1, run negative 2. And that is how we get this line. Okay. So that's how we do these questions. Let me know if you have any questions about this. Or just come see me during flex.